Mr Crispin here today with some radial milling and part 6 of machining cylinders. In today's video I'm going to do some radial milling on this end of the block and some radial milling on this end of the block and uh, you'll see that shortly. Rather than doing a massive explanation on what I'm going to try and produce I'll just do it and then you can uh, follow along. It should uh, appear in front of you. A few quick details on the setup. We've got a dividing head, four draw chuck, expanding mandrel and tail stock and uh, setting all that up is a whole nother video's worth really and if, if there's interest I'll do a video on setting it all up but basically I aligned the dividing head using a, um, a test bar with a number two Morse taper fitted in the dividing head spindle and once I got that set up uh, then I used this end to help me set up the tail stock and there's quite a bit to it but um, we'll stick to milling for today so let's do a few checks and make a start so the checks I'm going to do before we begin are basically to make sure that the component is set up right because it's all very well doing alignment checks on the dividing head and the tail stock but in the end what matters is how the component is sitting in relation to the machine's axis and there are a lot of ways in which it could be off. Uh, there is the setup of the dividing head that could throw it in. There's how well I've clocked the mandrel in the fore jaw. There's how accurately the expanding mandrel's made. And then, of course, there's how accurately the bore is positioned to the datum faces. Uh, and in the end, what we want is the datum faces to be true when, once all set up. So I'm just going to clock along um, this face. I'll set the clock to zero. And uh, that's within half a thousand, so that's okay. Next, I'll just check the other axis to see how well aligned we are to the X. I'll put it around this way this time so you can see what's going on. Within half a hour again, that's fine, so we can start milling. And what I've done before I started was to bring this to a position where this is uh, parallel to the table, and I've marked the hole on the dividing plate, so that gives me my datum to come back to every time. And to start off, I'm going to just have a go at these um, rims that go around the uh, outer edges just to check everything's set up right and then we'll get on to this pocket where the main milling will happen. I've set the tool on the centre line of rotation. I'm going to come down to a bit off the surface and take a roughing cut all the way round. to stop before you dig into the vertical face. Right. I will now take a finishing cut on this surface. Having done that, I'm now going to start roughing this um, segment in the middle. 
so that's a radius leading on from this recessed face all the way around it needs to blend at the back with this step there are many ways you could tackle this um, the way I'm going to do it is similar to what I've just done with this radius I'm going to start on the flat face uh, from the known hole on the dividing plate I'm going to bring the cutter all the way around to uh, a point just clear of the blend and I'm then going to mill a section all along the back so with the dividing head locked I'll stop rotating and unlock the milling table and mill all along there and I'll mark and I'll mark the position on the dividing head so I can return to that flat every time then I'll come down here then back along round to the flat along in so I'll keep getting closer to the middle almost like a pocketing motion and this way I'll avoid climb milling and I'll avoid having to keep winding back every time I take a cut and the flats at the back and the front will allow me to get to each start position uh, easily so I will be cheating slightly because the last segment won't be a true radius it'll be a flat but, um, but don't forget these features are normally cast in and this is purely an insulation cavity so back round to the date and position that should bring this nice and flat and I'm going to start at this side and for roughing I can probably take about the full width of the cutter it seems to be pretty rigid I've come nearly up to the shoulder but I've left a small gap tends to grab a bit on the way in for the cut but once we get fully engaged it's okay it's a pretty unusual cutting motion on the cutter because we're not cutting on purely the side or the bottom we're actually feeding the work into the bottom of the cutter and it's the bottom of the cutter that's leaving the finished surface the coolant off so I can see what we're doing lock the dividing head here coolant back on unlock the X and away we go down the length Well that was interesting, uh, it's a pretty reasonable surface for the size of cut I was taking but what I can see is that this surface is a little bit bumpy and that tells me that the uh, end of the cutter isn't actually flat and I'll show you what I mean with a little picture so we're effectively getting a shape like this with lots of little steps where the um, tool has gone over and uh, to explain why these are happening I'll show you a close up of um, a cutter it's a little more obvious on this is a 5.8 slot drill um, if I hold it up to a, something flat you can see the angle on the bottom of the tooth and so as the cutter spins that gives us a profile like this and it's the same on this cutter and the cutter I'm using and uh, I've looked through my uh, whole collection of milling cutters and they, they all have some sort of angle ground on 
and for normal milling where you're travelling along at the same depth uh, this doesn't have any effect because the periphery of the cutter totally flattens the surface. It's just in this case where the uh, surface is actually being left by the centre of the cutter and uh, that's why I'm seeing this uh, anomaly. So the conclusion is I'm going to carry on with this cutter but if anyone knows of where to get cutters with a totally flat bottom I'd be interested to know for future work. Back to milling now and we'll do a fast forward uh, finishing cut over the whole surface. Well there's the finished result after the finishing cut, it's uh, flatter than it looks and uh, here's one I did earlier and with a few uh, strokes of a file it flattens right out. Next up then I'm going to put a machine chamfer on it with this little uh, chamfering tool that will go down the straight and around the bend. Well that's come out pretty well, you can see the little chamfer all the way around there. Um, I'll discuss the uh, shape I've ended up with here uh, a bit later in the video, but for now I'm going to do the final operation which is to get rid of this little lump that was left by the uh, radius of the tool. I can't get rid of it totally, um, but I can minimise it. So to start off with I'm going to use a small milling cutter from the current angle, so I'll rotate the work into the cutter to try and get rid of that. Then I'll uh, level the work up and I'll come at it from this angle uh, with a tool vertical and get in that way. All done now. Well here's a quick close up on the results, you can see the milled surface there, it's nice shape but uh, not great surface finish but with a bit of um, filing it soon comes into a nice radius. Uh, I said I'd give a quick explanation on these steps and uh, basically it's an error on my part. When I initially milled these steps out I went too deep so I had the block sitting right like this, should have only gone down to about here but I calculated the intersection point to be too deep. So uh, I milled too much out, but I'd uh, put too much work in so far to start again, so I've gone with it. Moving on, I'm going to do the uh, smaller radius, so that calls for a smaller expanding mandrel, which I've got here. And that will be a very similar process. I'm going to rough the radius out, then finish it, and then sort the uh, blended intersection points out. I'll have a small step again here because the, uh, the same error as on this end will have led to this one being too deep which was an error in my uh, use of AutoCAD by the way anyway so I'll go and get on with this top section Well that's all the machining done, as you can see fully machined, this one obviously I've done a bit of hand finishing on and I thought just to finish the video off I'll uh, hand finish this surface just so you can see how I do it and then uh, we'll call it quits for part 6. So I'm going to start off with this tip slightly back in the vise and then I'm just going to work along using a rocking motion. Uh, all along from side to side and then uh, round the radius.
the rocking motion is to prevent flat spots. So after a bit of emery clothing that looks much flatter and uh, here on the left we have one uh, as it came off the machine. And then we have the uh, nearly finished one after a bit of hand finishing. So uh, that concludes part 6 and uh, concludes my uh, radio milling experiments for this time. I uh, hope you've enjoyed watching and see you on the next video.